Joker's daughter can't possibly be a good guy, can she? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into the digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read it dramatically back to you. All durations of the panel six and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. When we last left off, Joker's daughter had just begun working closely with Jason and Roy. And now, they're on a boat. As Jason and Roy find themselves in a firefight against Hive operatives aboard the USS Excelsior, Roy can only think about one thing. Wearing white is kind of empowering. The two continue to fight off the Hive agents when they begin to hear a siren go off, signaling that everyone up top needs to go down below. Jason says at least everyone knows that they're down here now, and Roy's concern is that they kind of may get shot along with the terrorists. Roy tells him only one problem though. First, Roy needs to disarm the bomb on this Navy vessel. And as Roy turns to look at the bomb, he states, Oh, yeah, about that. Jason looks back at him and he sees it along with Roy. That's a giant bomb. Do you think you can defuse it? And Roy tells him, nope. I mean, sure, no problem, but mostly no. However, our story doesn't begin there. Five hours earlier, Jason and Roy went to visit Tara Battleworth regarding their new addition to their team, Joker's Daughter. Tara tells him that having JD along with them is probably not the best thing they could do for their new business, but as long as JD can pass the exam with the doctor that Tara has set up for them, she'll help them out. But while JD is off being evaluated, Roy received a call about a local job and decided that he and Jason should go check it out while they're trying to kill time. The two meet up with Noelle, a woman that works as an analyst for the USS Excelsior, and she explains a call that she received recently. Someone contacted her from some group called Hive about a job. Jason asks her why doesn't she tell the Navy, but she says that the man also said that they had infiltrated the ranks of the Navy, and she didn't know who else she could call. She then goes on to state that the man said that whatever was going to happen was going to happen soon, maybe even today. So Jason tells her that this really isn't much that they can work off of, but Roy tells her they're going to take the job. Later, Jason and Roy snuck into the Pentagon because Jason wanted to check out how reliable their client was, and as they walked through the scanners, the two guards welcomed Colonel Clink and Admiral Worf, and Roy was surprised at how well that worked. And Jason tells him, remember that guy I worked with? Batman? Thus, that's how they got on the boat with the Hive agents all over them. Jason continues to fight off the oncoming Hive agents while Roy continues to work on the bomb, and Jason says that he wished that he knew at least what kind of bomb they were working with. And among the fallen Hive agents, one stands up and tells Jason that all he had to do was ask, Imagine a dirty bomb! But instead of radiation, think of one that would embed the thoughts and schemes of all of the brilliant minds of Hive's most brilliant minds. Now imagine that bomb going off on the graduating class of an entire battalion of American soldiers! And Jason tells the man, No thanks, I'm not that imaginative. As the man begins to lean towards Jason, he then sees that the bomb has been turned off, and Jason looks to see Roy has just hit the council with a bunch of his arrows a bunch of times. Jason then tells the Hive agent, Looks like you just got pwned by a guy that wears trucker hats. Right! I mean, hey! Roy says. But while JD is being given the okay by the doctors, JD leaves and jumps into a lake and she swims. When she comes back up, she says, Hello, Daddy! And she puts on the Joker mask, stating that anything Daddy can do, she can do better, darker, and sicker. Later, back home, Roy begins to wake up from a nightmare, one that he's been having a lot more often. He remembers the time that he had to leave his mercenary group, the Iron Rule, having to let them die for losing their way by calling an airstrike on them. But why is he thinking about them now? Maybe it's because when he was down in the nethers rescuing JD, the man that he saw was a man named Everest, and he was with Iron Rule. Of course, this makes Roy realize that they're back. Elsewhere, Jason and JD go have a talk about how the doctor visit went, and how JD is looking forward to this fresh new start in her life. Jason tells her that Roy and Tara think that she's crazy, and he asks if she's sure she's ready, to which she replies, absolutely. Jason then begins to tell JD a story. His mother used to smoke, but his father used to hit her for it, and his mother could never understand how he would always find out. Well, it's because she used to smell. She never noticed it. He then reaches into his coat, and he pulls out the Joker mask that JD took back, and asks, does she know how bad the sewage-treated human flesh mask smells? The only thing Jason wants to know if this was all a lie from day one, and JD tells him no, but that's when she begins to laugh. <laughs> she then asks if he minds if she puts it back on, and then she tries to hug Jason, telling them not to fight. She shoves him back, taking his gun and pointing it right at his head, and she tells him to join her. Together they can burn Gotham to the ground, and he tells her he's sorry. She begins to ask for what as she begins to open fire on him, and he knocks the gun away from her and then kicks her off the goalpost that they were sitting on. As she lands, Jason fires one shot, hitting JD. She looks up bloodied and tells him, You shot me! Awesome! Jason then tells her that if it isn't obvious, she's fired. And back in the city, Roy begins to look for clues as to where Iron Rule may be hiding out. But as he walks down an alley, he begins to feel something, like he's being watched. And as he turns to draw his bow, he asks how he could not have seen this coming, when above him, 
stood Iron Rule, infected and changed from the radiation from the airstrike bomb that he called on them long ago. With Iron Rule capturing Roy and bringing him to the edge of death, they have one question for the internet as they stream the torture. Should Roy live or die? And the votes begin to come in, and everyone voted a die. With JD being shot, Jason stands by when he gets a call from Barbara Gordon, informing him of Roy's internet situation. But as Jason begins to leave to find Roy, the ambulance with JD begins to head towards the hospital. As the ambulance drives down the road, a hand reaches out of the sewer, knocking over all of the cars, and the ambulance flips over. As JD sits up in the tipped over ambulance, she begins to yell out, again, again! But from the outside, Everest helps JD out, asking, you okay, boss? And she tells him, never better, but it would have been nice to have been rescued before getting shot. Back with Jason, he begins to search Roy's place for some clues as to where Iron Rule may have taken him. Jason then begins to find something that Roy crafted, something called a boomerang arrow. And with this, he'll be able to find Roy's quiver. As Jason begins to follow the signal back to his quiver, he notices a box with a biohazard symbol on it. And if this is what Jason thinks it is, it may have just saved his life. But back with Roy, he begins to wake up and the first thing that he sees is JD. Roy asks her how she found him. Furthermore, be careful because Iron Rule is over. But JD cuts him off, telling him that they are no match for the two of them. Let's get you out of here, Roy. Roy tells her, thank God that he was wrong about her and she stops him. Psych! Roy looks down to see JD holding a gun at Tara Battleworth's head. Roy tells her to let her go. She's not a part of this, but JD tells him that he's wrong. She very much is. She made Roy and Jason into respectable men, but the truth is, they are just as bad as JD. But before JD can pull the trigger, Jason appears on the screens around them, telling them all that they have five seconds to give up. And he begins counting down to one. As he counts to one, the lights go out and JD begins to laugh. <laughs> and then she asks, is it me or did it just get really hot in here? Everest begins to call out to Jason as he puts his hand closer to Roy. And then Everest is shot with an arrow. And Roy looks at him. Ruh oh! Everest yells that he's basically a walking nuclear power plant. So what is this little arrow supposed to do? And Roy closes his eyes and begins to count backwards when suddenly a small explosion goes off and Everest begins to melt away. Roy yells that those arrows were supposed to put out nuclear energy, not be used on people. But one by one, Jason begins to shoot the rest of Iron Rule at them until only B is left. B quickly unties Roy and states that he's free, and Roy tells Jason not to kill her. The only reason that they are this way is because of him. And Jason tells Roy that he did his fair share of bad things, but nothing compared to them. As Jason holds the bow to her, Roy states that they are better than this. And Jason tells him, you're better than this. I, however, am not. Roy then elbows B, knocking her out and asks, Now what? You're not gonna shoot her while she's unconscious. And Roy's right. So Jason puts the bow down and states, Fine, you win. But she does go to jail. Then JD appears in the monitors telling the internet, Oh my god, these two are so adorable. I almost don't want to kill them. Jason then turns his gun to JD while she holds a gun down on Tara and tells her that he was being nice shooting her in the shoulder before. Next time it's gonna be between her eyes. And Roy tells everyone to put their guns down. But while Jason and JD continue to talk, Roy shoots JD with a taser arrow knocking her out. Roy then looks back at Jason and he asks him, what the hell was that? Talk about overkill. You just killed four people with the world watching. No one is gonna hire us again. Jason tells him to grow up. Over 300,000 people you don't know just voted to kill you for fun because they could. Do you really think I give a damn what they think about us or me? Jason turns to the camera and he tells everyone the show's over and he shoots out the camera. Jason then goes on to state that this whole thing was never going to work. This thing with them. Roy has too much faith in people while Jason doesn't have any in people. Before leaving, Jason tells him that he won't ever be the hero that Roy wants him to be, but he will be the hero that Jason knows that he is. And he walks off to leave Roy to think about what to do next. Now this is where Red Hood and Arsenal leave off, but we do have Red Hood Rebirth coming soon, and the story of Red Hood is gonna continue. Roy went over to Titan's Rebirth, which you probably can watch on the channel already at this point. Hope you guys enjoyed, and don't forget to check out our manga channel where you can get manga every Monday and Friday, and click the link down below to order our book about comic book movies coming out very soon. Lastly, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Comic Story, and I'll see you next time right here.